And so I want to talk to you about the kingdom of God and how you're able to, by faith, receive everything God has for you in his kingdom. See, in the kingdom of God, God's working on your mansion right now. So you need a house, it's in the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is your finance. And the kingdom of God is your health. And the kingdom of God is your destiny. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth like it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is available right now. That's what the Bible says. Don't look to here and there. They, oh, over here the kingdom is. not The kingdom's over here. And the, no, the kingdom of God is inside of you. And the, and the way you access that kingdom, the way you receive whatever's in that kingdom into your life, the way you take it is by faith. So faith is the currency of the kingdom. So if you have faith and you, you understand faith, you know how to operate faith, you know how the laws of faith work, then you could, you could receive anything from God. Whatever you need is available. If it's in the kingdom, you can have it today. You can have it now. You can have it in your life. That's how we got this whole city block because everyone said you can't have it. You can't afford it. It's impossible. Blah, 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 blah. We got a $30 million building, a $20 million structure. We bought 13 houses worth, I don't even know, like another 10 million. How did all that happen? It was in the kingdom, but you got to get it from the kingdom, the spirit, and you got to bring it into the natural. So I'm going to teach you how to do that over the next few podcasts. And we're going to talk about a woman in the Bible who needed a miracle, a healing. It's a woman with the issue of blood. It's in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 29 and 34. It says, a woman was there who had been submitted or subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she only got worse, guys. So she, this woman is a, a, a wealthy woman. Um, she's a successful woman. Uh, we, we see that. She, she obviously had a husband and, and a family and a children and a home and a life. But then this sickness hit her body. And because of her particular sickness, she was what they, the Bible calls an unclean woman. And according to the law of Moses, anyone with that particular disease could not, it's like leprosy, you couldn't be in public anymore. And therefore, you couldn't have relation with those you had relation with before. So now she's not only sick and bleeding and dying, her husband's gone, her children are gone, her home is gone. And then it goes on to say that she had money and she had spent it all on these doctors and she didn't get any better, she got worse. So now this woman's situation is hopeless. Uh, her, 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 her circumstance is hopeless. But the Bible said that she heard, she heard about Jesus and then she came behind him in the crowd. She touched his cloak. But the key was she said to herself, if I touch him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be healed. If I touch him, I'm gonna be whole. And then immediately her bleeding stopped she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And then Jesus said to her, and this is one of the most powerful portions of scripture in the Bible. And this is going to contradict a lot of religious teaching, but it's the fact. Daughter. I feel the anointing. Daughter, your faith has healed you. No, no, no. Wait a minute. God healed her. It says it, that the power went from Jesus and it went right into her body. Yes, it was the power of God, but Jesus was emphatic. It wasn't my power. I'm not giving credit to my power. Uh, he said, I'm going to give this miracle. I'm going to give the credit for this miracle to you because yes, it is my power. Yes, we know it's God, but it wasn't until she had faith that she could receive that power. How many people there that day needed that power? A healing there, a breakthrough there, a miracle there, but they didn't receive. Why? Because they didn't know how to connect to the kingdom. They didn't understand how the law of faith works. And pastoring for 20 years now, preaching for 30, this is one of the areas that I think people miss it the most. They don't understand how faith works. They say, oh, I've heard that. Oh, I know that. It's not about hearing and knowing. It's about knowing, knowing and living it and seeing the results of it. Don't say I got faith and there's no results in your life. If you have faith, you're going to have tremendous results in your life. So I want to teach you how to walk by faith and receive from the kingdom and not by sight. So the first principle we learn from this woman is that she heard. That's right. She heard. And it's very important how you hear. Because, and it's not just what you hear, it's how you hear about Jesus. Do you hear about a religious Jesus? Do you hear about a healing Jesus? Do you hear about a providing Jesus? What kind of Jesus do you hear about? She heard about him. And I tell you, this is something where most people are missing it. Because Satan, number one, hates the word. He hates it. 
That's why he hates the attacks of preachers. He hates what we're doing now. He hates this because that word creates the force of faith. That word creates faith. Now, there's two different types of words in the Bible when it comes to God's word. There's a word called logos, which is the written word. And then there's a word called rhema, which is when God reveals his word. Now, it's very important because a lot of people have so-called faith failures. It's because the logo has never become a rhema. The logo has never become a rhema. So the written word has never become a revealed word. And it's all God's word. But when you have rhema and God reveals his word to you, man, that's like a blank check. That's currency. Oh, come on now. That's that currency of the kingdom. And that's what happened with this building. You see, I had a, I got a word from God that I, I, I give you the key of David. I opened the door that no man can shut. I had a word from God. I had proof of my evidence of the building. I had it because I got a word from God. And when God gives you a word, if you're going to build, believe for something big, it's never just one word. He'll give you one word and then another word and another word. And why? Because he wants you, you to hear that word and he wants you to build a case of, of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of what you don't see. Faith is reality. Faith is substance. Just like this cup of coffee is substance. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can, faith is a material. Even though you can't see it, even though you can't touch it, it's real. It's real. And if you get faith, you got it. So you got to build your case. You got to build your evidence. So once once I got that word that, that this was our building, man, and I'm going to talk to you about it maybe a little bit more. I'll do a whole teaching on how we got this building. But all hell broke loose. I'll tell you, they gave the building away. Uh, everything, the COVID hit. I mean, everything happened that said we weren't going to get the building. I remember one time when they said the building's been given away and they said, Jason, somebody that had possession of the building said, you will never get this building. But see, what they didn't understand is I had something higher than their confession. I had something higher than their word. I had a higher authority. I had a word from the kingdom. I had a word from God. I had something revealed to me from God. So no matter what it looked like, no matter what it felt like, it was my building. And you know what? I'm preaching in this building today. Because faith always works. Faith always produces. There's no such thing as a faith failure. No, no, no. If something failed, it's not faith in God. It's on our part. Now, we got to clear a lot of things up there so people don't come under condemnation and, and guilt and all these things. But we have to know how the kingdom of God works. And it works by faith. So it all begins with hearing. You got to hear. Faith comes by hearing. So not only am I hearing the logo of God, but I got to get a rhema from God. And let me, let me explain it this way. Um, let, me, let me say a, a verse and then I'll, I'm going to explain something to you. Mark 4 says, the farmer sows the word. So I'm a farmer today. I got a bag. I got a bunch of seeds. I got healing seeds. I got building seeds. I got your children getting saved seeds. I got destiny seeds, purpose seeds, healings, all these seeds. I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing, I'm sowing. And the Bible says some people are like the seed along the path where they hear the word and it's sowing. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown into their heart. So if what I'm teaching doesn't work, that that word doesn't produce, then why does the devil believe it works? Because the devil goes right after that word. Now we know the word of salvation, but what about the word of healing? The kingdom of God on healing, the kingdom of God on prosperity, the kingdom of God on purpose, all these words. So when that word comes, I tell you, the enemy is going to go to work to steal that word out of your heart. And that's why you got to get a rhema from God. And once you got a word from God, faith comes, faith comes by hearing, and that word will produce. Now, let me give you an example of how to build this out. So my mom, my dad, they needed a miracle. They're like this woman with the issue. They had a situation that couldn't be fixed by natural problems or natural solutions. So they have me, their son, and, well, let me say it this way. They started going to church. Um, and as they started going to church, the pastor said, um, if you have a problem, find a promise. Okay. 
have a problem finding. So their their problem was very obvious. <laughs> uh, my mom and dad had three children, and my real dad left us, and so my mom remarried a man of God. It was Pastor Dwayne today. So when I say my dad, I mean Pastor Dwayne. And three children, Tamar, Raymond, and Jason. Raymond was a crack cocaine addict. Tamar was, was a meth addict. And I was a meth addict, manufacturer, and drug dealer, the second largest in the city. I was a violently arrogant man, fully demon-possessed, wicked as they come. And when the preacher said, if you have a problem, find a promise, well, it was obvious the problem was those three children, and especially that one right there named Jason. And so what they did is they went to the Word of God, the Logos of God, and they started finding promises that promised them our freedom and our salvation. Promises like, all my children shall be taught by the, I feel the power of God. Mm, glory to God. All my children shall be taught by the Lord and great will be the peace of my children and in righteousness they shall be established. Ch scriptures like, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Scriptures like, that me and my house are redeemed from the curse of the law. And they started building scripture after scripture. They got to the point where they were at a whole notebook page, front and back, of promises that pertain to me and my brother and my sister. That was a logo word. That word didn't produce faith. But as they meditated on that word, and they spoke that word over and over, and they read it, and they meditated, that word wasn't just a logo word. God now began to reveal it. So what I, one of the things you want to do if you're believing God for something, I say meditate in order to revelate. Come on. Meditate in order to revelate. So you got to meditate in that word and meditate. And eventually that light will come on and faith will come and anointing will come. And now my parents start having confidence. And they're going to need it because they're about to step into what I call of the good fight of faith. Because everything in the natural is saying to my mom, fear is saying, the demons are saying, this boy's coming home in a coffin. This boy's going to prison for life. And they even raided her home with 18 cop cars looking for me. You want to talk about having your faith tested. But when you have a word from God and you have a knowing in your heart, I tell you, don't let that devil steal that. I call it like a pit bull on a pork chop. You lay hold of that promise and you don't let that devil take it. And that promise will produce every time all the time, right on time. It'll produce 30, it'll produce 60, and it'll produce a hundredfold because God's kingdom is your inheritance. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth like it is in heaven. And they got that word and they declared that word every morning, every morning. And it's powerful in the spirit world because when they would speak that word, I would be in my bedroom and they would confess that word. Not only did they hear it, but they started saying it. Because as you hear yourself saying it, faith will come. As you hear yourself saying it, faith will come. The fastest way faith comes is when you say it. That's what happened with this woman. She said, and the Bible literally says she said and kept saying. So she didn't just say, she's like, she's like, I'm gonna be healed. I'm gonna be healed. I'm gonna be healed. I'm gonna be healed when I touch him, when I touch him. And she built faith. That's what happened to my parents. And so they're declaring and they're declaring and their confidence is building and then all hell breaks loose because the enemy is what? Trying to steal that word. He's sending that trouble. He's sending those problems to distract them, to discourage them. But they're on it like that pit bull on a pork chop. They're on it. They're on it. And faith is growing and faith is growing. And it's so powerful because every morning, about five in the morning, they would speak that word over my bedroom. And I would be up because I'd be tweaking all night. I'd be up and I would see like a cloud of the glory of God coming under the door. And would begin to fill the room where I was. And I got scared of it. I knew. I said, because that demon in me knew. If that touches me, if that touches me, man, it's going to change my life. It's going to weaken me and I'm done. So I would literally back off, back off, and I would jump out the window. That happened to me a lot of times. That's the power in the spirit world. Because their faith was working. Their faith was bringing the kingdom to my life. Their faith was bringing salvation and deliverance. Well, because of time, I don't want to take too long. And I want to answer some questions. But I'll tell you this. Today, because of their faith, their faith has made our family whole. Yes, it was God's power. Yes, we give glory to God. Yes, it's all glory to God. All power is God. All power belongs to God. But Jesus said, it was your faith that made you whole. It was my mother and father's faith that got me free. 
Now today, my brother serves in the house of God. He's preparing to be a leader. My sister is one of our major leaders here. She has, I think, 400 women under her care. She's a children's pastor. Um, and me, I'm the senior pastor of Freedom City. So according to your faith, let it be done to you. But it all starts with that word, with that rhema. You got to hear from God. This is how I live, church. This is, people say, man, you're doing very good. You're very successful. I'll tell you, it's not complicated. You just got to hear from God. And if you don't hear, like you don't have a knowing, you don't have a rhema, don't move, don't invest, don't step out, don't start dating them, don't do anything until you have a word from God. Because once you have a word, you got faith. And if you got faith, you got mountain moving power. And all hell could break loose against you, but your faith is going to see you through. So with that said, let's see if we have some questions. I feel like saying, give God a shout. Well, I don't see any questions here, but God is good. Here we go. What has been, this is from Sol Oreo. And if you can, let me know where you're from. What has been the biggest faith battle you have been in and how did you conquer it? And what scripture was rooted at the time? Well, I'll tell you this one. Um, I think the one of the biggest ones has been a lot. Um, one of the biggest ones, um, if I get a little emotional, I'm just grateful. Um, uh, one, of, one of my friends said, man, you're like, you cry a lot now. Yeah, I do. I never cried before. Like I got delivered of, the, of, of pride. And I cry like a baby now because God's good. It was my son, Joshua. Um, we had a word from God that you're going to have a son, my firstborn. And his name will be Joshua. And, and I had that word. And it was revealed. And, and everything was going according to plan. We go to the doctor to get the ultrasound. And then that's when the doctor tells us, uh, well, you could see it on his face. He's he got he had that, that nervous look. And he basically brought us into the office and showed us, um, you know, uh, uh, the ultrasound on, you know, the screen behind him, like a black screen. And he says, this is your son. And this is his head. And it's deformed. And you need to abort him uh, because it's not healthy for your wife. He's not right. And, uh, man, my heart just dropped. Oh my God. You know, th that's the words. You, that was like the worst was like the worst words you want to hear. Right. You, I didn't expect that. And then my wife, I look at her face and she just starts crying and it's just like, our faith has just been smashed. And I said, okay, doctor. And then, you know, the next feeling is anger, you know? So I said, okay, doctor, uh, thank you. Um, I know you're telling us what you see, but. We're not going to do that. Um, his name is going to be his name is going to be Joshua. Mm. And we went home. And we didn't want to tell nobody because we didn't need sympathy. Because if you tell people, sometimes you tell the wrong people and they'll they'll sympathize you out of your faith. I didn't need faith at that. I didn't need sympathy. I needed compassion. I needed somebody to come alongside and believe with me. So I didn't tell nobody. I didn't need sympathy. I, and I just said, Liz, we're going to fight the fight here. So we turned off all the TVs, like regular TV, you know, cable and all that. We turned it off because I didn't got to bring faith. I'm not against it, but I'm just saying that's not going to bring faith. And you got to be careful on your intake. So you can't have all this world mess in and then be a faith giant. It's, it's, you're going you're gonna, to you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna become what you eat. And so we turned it off and we meditated in the word day and night, literally. And we, and we played the word 24 hours a day for 14 days straight. And faith was built. Now, I'm going to say something. You can feel fear, feel it, but still have faith. That's, you're just being tempted. doesn't mean you don't have faith. I had faith in my heart, but fear was in the emotional realm. But I had faith in my heart. My wife had faith in, our heart, in her heart. We go back to the doctor. Obviously, it's, it's scary. Um, but there's a knowing. That God's going to see us through this, and his name is Joshua. We get to the doctor, and... And, and he goes and he does, he does the ultrasound again. And it was crazy because just like that look on his face of something's wrong. I'll never forget his face. I mean, he's a great doctor too, by the way. He, the look on his face was like he's seen a ghost. And, and it, like he saw a miracle. He couldn't deny it. 
and he's going in there and he's looking and then and then finally he he, he brings us into the office sits us down and he goes mr and mrs lozano um i never seen this before and then he puts joshua's one from two weeks ago his head and then his head and it shrank and it became normal because in the kingdom there's normal heads in the kingdom there's body parts in the kingdom there's livers and hearts and kidneys in the kingdom it's there and he said you don't need to there's no need for an abortion everything's fine we weren't going to have it anyway but everything's fine and everything went according to plan uh, but the fight wasn't over yet it wasn't over because you asked me the faith fight it wasn't over but now we had to wait a few more months until the delivery and as that was happening our faith was being built we didn't let off that's another thing don't let off you stay with it and you let more rhema come and you build that case in your spirit because your spirit has the capacity to become as big as you want you could become a faith giant and this overrides background your history how much money you have in the bank the color of your skin all this this you're talking about living out of the kingdom now you're talking about shadows healing people you're it's a different level so we keep building faith and as we're going getting closer to delivery the time of delivery um man i realized then like the holy spirit spoke to me and says um she can't have a c-section because if she does the devil's going to try to kill her and i believe in c-sections i believe in doctors but in this case i had a word from god a rhema that this was going to happen and it, there was no history of C-section in her family or anything. It was just something the Holy Spirit had told me. And sure enough, we're, Josh, is, we're, we're put, she's pushing. We're in labor for a long time, an abnormal amount of hours. I don't know exactly. It was like a long time. I don't want to misquote, but I think it was like 13 hours. And, and then finally, it's time to deliver. And the doctor says, one more push, Elizabeth, and... Um, we're going to have to do a C-section. When he said that, my heart dropped again, like, whoa. Because it was like, I heard that earlier from God. And then I told her, Liz, babe, my faith is taking you as far as it can go. It's This one's going to be on you. And my little wife, the last push, it was like a movie. She screams, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. And that last confession, scream, Joshua's there. Next thing you know, he's in my hand, beautiful baby boy, and the miracle happened. God did the miracle. But then, I need to say this too, because I need, to, I need to help people. After Joshua, we went to have another child, and there was a miscarriage. Broke our heart. Where's our faith? What's going on? One thing I learned, you never blame God. You never say, oh, God, you didn't come through. Or God's doing this evil thing to me. No, the enemy comes to kill, steal, destroy. Instead of that, I said, God, we got, we got, we got defeated. But you know what? That baby's in heaven. And I'm not going to get bitter. And I'm not going to try to have a baby right away. We're going to wait until we get our faith built back up because it hurt our faith. Went back, second time, miscarried again. Same process. We're not going to get bitter at God. We're not going to say faith doesn't work. We know better. But what are, where are we being taken advantage of? Is there an area that we are being taken advantage? And this is where people get into condemnation and I'm not good enough. And No, no, no. It's not about that. You just got to say, God, help me. And God revealed to us what we needed to do. And the third baby, the third baby came, Joy. And the Lord, but the thing with Joy is I got her name. The Lord said her, her name is Joy and she'll come in the morning. And then all of a sudden it looked like miscarriage again. And I remember she came home from service because I was on my way to go preach. And it was miscarriage. All the signs I said, lay down. I went and preached. I remember preaching myself into faith. Like, just no, I'm not. We're going to believe God. Her name's going to be Joy. And you know what? Joy did come in the morning. I'm saying all that to say this. Nothing is impossible with God. Let it be done according to your faith. But if you've had so-called faith failure, don't get into condemnation. Don't blame God. Understand you have an enemy. And understand he hates you and understand if you've been knocked down, you can get back up and you can conquer in those areas the enemy defeated you in. Because no weapon formed against you will prosper or succeed. And I hope this helped you. I hope this broadcast helps you. And somebody's asked me one more question. 
and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go because it's been 30 minutes. But um, I hope you're enjoying this. We'll do it next week. But uh, what's one book you recommend on faith in the area of prosperity? I think there's a good solid book by Kenneth Hagin, um, and it's it's a prosperity book. Um, and it's about the basics of prosperity. And I think that's a solid book because, you know, you want to have balance when it comes to prosperity because a lot of people get into prosperity and they don't have purpose. So you have to have purpose for the prosperity. So God wants to bless you and give you good things to enjoy. But at the same time, you want to have a purpose so you don't get into greed and all that kind of thing. Kingdom minded and you'll be fine. Well, I think, well, they want me to do one more question here. Oh, I think, uh, how should we be praying? Well, why don't we pick this up next week only because of time. And I pray this blessed you today. I pray your faith is stirred. I pray your faith is strengthened. And I don't know what the enemy's doing, but I tell you this, all things are possible to them that believe. And like Jesus told the woman with the issue, daughter, your faith has healed you. I decree and declare that your faith will connect you to the power and the power of God will do the miracle. I love you. May the Lord bless you. If this podcast has been a blessing, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you want to give, you can give. Help us to get the message out. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And remember this, we got a message for that lion Pharaoh. His time is up in your life and he has to let my people go. God bless. <laughs>